Well, you know, we are going to celebrate those heroes here on the show. Um, yes. Much of the country working from home, large numbers of hardworking heroes still reporting to work each and every day this week. We'll be meeting some of those people, seeing the faces, hearing the voices behind those magical people. With us now is Elizabeth Douglas, an ICU nurse, manager at NYU Langone Hospital in Brooklyn, working on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. It is so great to be able to thank you from afar. We're giving you a, a massive social distance hug from where we sit. Um, and thank you. thank you is just not a strong enough word. But tell us, Elizabeth, <laughs> how are you doing and what is your typical day like right now? So a typical day starts about six o'clock in the morning. Uh, I work usually between 12 to 13 hours. If I can skip out earlier, I do. Um, and we're constantly, um, you know, making plans and figuring out where to put patients and where to put staff and how to make it all work together. And then something happens and we make a new plan. Um, the, most of the, my day feels like it's spent in problem solving and moving things around and getting what we need. It's a constant kind of um, jigsaw puzzle. You know, Elizabeth, uh, there's a couple of doctor, a uh, couple of doctors in our family, but there's several nurses in my family, and mm -hmm. um, I marvel at their courage. Do you uh, do you have a fear of becoming infected? Does that stay with you? Is it is it on your brain all the time? I, when I'm at work, I don't really think about it. Um, it's more, you're just here and you're doing what you do and you just have to get things done. And so it's not a conscious fear. And there's the, the need to do the right things and keep yourself safe and keep everyone else safe. So you think of it that way, but it's not the same as, um, the fear that I'm going to be infected. It's more worrying about how, if I'm, if I'm going to take something home to my family, if I'm going to take something, yeah. if I'm going to touch something wrong and I'm going to end up infecting a coworker or, or a patient that isn't, that doesn't have COVID because there's still non COVID patients in the hospital. So it's more the fear of hurting someone else more than the fear of hurting myself. And mm -hmm. can you, you mentioned taking something home when you do get to go home, can you unwind? Can you decompress? What is it like to balance both home life and this incredible job that you're doing right now? It's hard. So going home also means social distancing. So I have the advantage of socializing all day, but when I go home to my, my two kids and my husband, um, you know, I have to take a shower and wash my hands and do all that stuff before I even um, get to, get to, you know, see them or kiss them. Um, and then most of my night, you just, you're still, problem solving and you're still trying to, you know, disconnect. There's no option to go out to dinner and, and relax and put your phone down. It's still always in front of you. What is the number one? I think, you know, you're, you just said you're a mom of two and your kids must be loaded with so many questions, but what is the number one uh, question that they ask you? And what is your number one challenge? Um, what what you find the most challenging in this time right now? So I think that my kids ask me basically about patients. Uh, are they are they all dying? Do some get better? Um, they're ten. And, my kids are ten and fourteen, so they have a, a pretty good understanding, and they know that I take care of sick patients, and so they understand that people die. It's not that kind of you know, uh, but they're the, they really don't understand. Is it, is it a death sentence, you know, and, and it's easy, you know, in the ICU, a, a lot of my patients will die, but you know, we, we do, we are having success. And so being able to kind of alleviate their fears and say, it's, it's, it, it doesn't mean it's over. Not everyone is going to die. We are going to get through this and, and, you know, being positive through it. Um, is probably the most important thing for them. As far as challenges at work, there's too many patients. Mm. Um, trying to find enough beds and 
So I have to take care of them. And we make it work. We get it done. We do it. Um, we move people around and we have double the amount of our ICU beds. We make, we create spaces. We're doing it. Um, but it's hard. It's, it's, and you never want to be the reason that someone can't be treated because it's just not enough resources. But ultimately, you know, there are times where, you know, we, we can only stretch so far. Elizabeth, I can um, see, I can see and hear as we all can uh, the emotion in your voice. And um, we just, we are so thankful. Uh, we are so thankful that you're there every day uh, fighting the fight on behalf of all of us who are um, literally stuck uh, isolating at home. And um, I, I know that, I know that being called a hero makes you uncomfortable. I already know that. Um, but I have to tell you, when I, when I see and hear you speak with the passion that you are on behalf of your patients, it, the reason the word hero exists is because of people like you. Thank you. I have a really and great Elizabeth, team. Yeah. We, we will, I certainly will, I know, not to speak for Kelly, but I, I know pretty well, we will remember this conversation with you every single day. We'll remember what you have said and that, that emotion, that human emotion in your voice, um, we will think about it every single day through this. We're going to get through it together, and we wish you the best. Again, oh. a big hug. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, for Thank talking you. with us. We're with you, okay?